Really? Yep. G'day, Luke from Drifter here. And uh, Wednesday afternoon, uh, January, for our first week back at work. And uh, I said on uh, Facebook this morning I'm going to set up the new EDOT and uh, do a little video. So here we are. Um, yeah, been flat out all day. Still a lot of little tweaks we've been doing, and uh, but pretty much got it ready so we can show you what's going on. Um, yeah, about everybody working flat out. It's amazing what we've got here with 100 staff. We've got so many skilled, dedicated staff, and um, everyone's running around like crazy doing everything, everything I need doing to get this ready to go. So it's been great. Right running around doing everything we need to do to get this dot finished and ready to go. So it's been great. So lucky to have so many staff and doing so many different things with canvas, steel, leather, you know, and all the dot chat and everything, the kitchen factory. Everybody's part of this trailer and uh, it's been great working with everyone. So we're just going to do a quick video to show you what the differences are on this trailer compared to the other dots. So there's half a dozen major features that's new and we're not going to go into too much detail just on this video but we'll basically show you what's going on. So why don't we just uh, start here. So this is uh, our prototype panel. Um, I spent two days in the last two days before Christmas, 23rd, 24th, up in Brisbane with Bruce. We pulled that apart pretty much. We put it back together while I was in there. We had a um, bit of mucking around. So it's not quite perfect yet. Still got to replace, replace a few breakers, replace those red lights with blue lights and things like that. So we've got a little bit to do. But that's our new panel. So this is a big thing for us, having all of the uh, electrics up inside the canopy away from the front toolbox. So one of the problems with the front toolbox is with the deep area of the toolbox trying to get um, these are all wall mounted type you know things uh, wall mounted type components and they're much better suited to going in a wall like that rather than deep in a box so uh, the layout we were having trouble with and also the heat a little bit you know extra heat on the front there where this is basically insulated by the big walk-up hardtop tent so what we've done Kaido's drawn this canopy up we're making them ourselves now in-house we've made it 100 mils longer and that gives two advantages. One, it gives more room inside because we've taken basically 250 mils of this front space, but the canopy is 100 mils longer. And that also means that when you're reaching into here, a lot easier to reach to your area in here because that's just closer to you. We've still got room here for your um, alia box. So what we've got here inside is a twin lithium 125 from Safari. Uh, we've gone, you know, we were doing lithium for a while, but now we've gone twin lithium. Uh, we've done plenty of inverters with Red Arc, but now I've gone to a 2000 watt Victron inverter, okay, and the uh, DC DC charger from Victron, the solar controller for the for the roof, there's 525 watts on the roof, and then also the high voltage solar controller for the portable panel. So you can see uh, they are separate items, and there is uh, quite a few advantages having them separate rather than combined into one. One of the big ones well, too, if you have a you know a breakdown or a fault with say the, the solar, it's not going to affect anything else. And the other big advantage is if you're driving um, with with the old system we had the BMS all in one, three in one, you can only ever accept input from one uh, source. So if you're driving, you've got DC DC from your vehicle. The solar is just doing absolutely nothing. Now because we've got some appliances that take a lot of power out, we need to put a lot of power back in, and that's why we've got big solar on the roof. And so we want to be able to put a lot of power in. It's such a shame to waste that power on the roof while you're driving because the roof's pumping in 25 amps basically while you're driving. But if you're putting 30 amps in from the vehicle, you know, in the old system, that was wasted. Now, this can uh, accept inputs from more than one source. So basically while we're driving along, we're putting 50 amps into the batteries, which is great. So that's a big difference. Um, we're using some Simon Marine electronic switching and... Uh, that's it there as well. So, so that's the side marine panel. Okay, this is it here. Won't go into a lot of detail, but basically there's your home screen. Um, you can see here we've got solar, so only two and a half amps going in. It's uh, the sun's well down now in the afternoon. Um, we've got 12 amps coming out of the inverter. Um, five for the fridge, and that's pretty much it there. So we've got here 94%, um, 13 volts and total of uh, 12 amps coming out. We've got a total of 245 amp hours there. 
Now we've got 245 usable amp hours. That'll bring the battery down to 20%. Uh, here's the tanks. Okay, so 40 and 39 litres. We've got to tweak these a little bit, but you can see there, the old system we had was just very inaccurate. Um, and this system here, you can see basically exactly what's in your tank. So you've got rear tank, front tank. Okay, the canopy temperature has dropped out. We've got to fix that. But you've got the inverter temperature there, 36. And the temperature here in the canopy would be about 38 degrees at the moment. It's very hot this afternoon. In kilometer, we've got to fix up, have a little tweak on that. Barograph is there. So there's some standard features come with the Cymarine. Now the little switching here, by, these are Safari switches designed by Safari. Um, Kaido's got a label these yet, but these are the uh, uh, switches. So these are touch sensitive. Um, so we've got the front light, the rear lights, um, spotlights, and the courtesy lights. Now, right up. <coughs> just switch that while I'm watching it so yep. you know what it does. Switch this this one. So we've got the courtesy lights as well. Now this one here switches. This is also a really nice light, a flush light from Safari. Um, you can see the blue. Now the, the very clever thing with these switches is it's got a little microprocessor there that uh, Safari has patented. And this has got a dimming function. So you watch, as I dim this, I hold my finger on the dim and it'll switch over. So the one button does too. We can switch back to white light or by holding our finger on, we can switch to the blue. So very clever. Only, this is the only one in the world that can do that uh, with a touch sensitive dimming button can switch between, so pretty cool. Obviously we've gone with a bit of blue because this is the E dot and um, let's turn that light off. Um, e dot and you know the blue looks awesome. So we've also got some rock lights you might be able to just see there. Got some rock lights shining down. Okay so they come on and off. Uh, also with the blue light in the canopy. So yeah the um, now we've also got a screen here you can see a perspex screen that drops down. We're going to change that to a sliding screen, but that'll drop down and protect all your batteries while you're driving so you can fill this up fully with your gear. Um, the other big advantage too with this whole system is uh, each of those appliances, there's four of them there, all come on an app on your phone. Okay, so we can see here, this is the portable solar, not doing much at the moment. We've got uh, EDOT solar, so this is the solar on the roof. All right, so it's 30 watts, two amps coming in, not much going on. Again, the sun's down, portable solar, roof solar, and the inverter. So this is, is really good out. This is really clever, this stuff. Okay, so we're pulling uh, 136 watts at the moment. It's, it's inverting, it's the output there, and there's our voltage on our battery. So you've got a lot of settings you can uh, muck around with these. And so each of those blue appliances will come with an app. You just download the app, it comes up here and uh, very configurable so that's a big advantage of having uh, these Victron appliances. Now if you just had the one solar controller on your vehicle um, for example the one portable solar controller that'll give you amps and voltage on your battery so it's like a mini BMS just by buying that portable solar and having the, um, the Victron uh, controller which gives you the, uh, all the data. So yeah, um, so longer canopy this is where our gas, box, our gas bottle used to be and Kodos designed up a nice uh, box there. Very good as well, we've got some rubber non-slip matting there so it's a great area for charging your phone because this is quite a busy area here so charging your phone up there, we've got some plugs here. Really nice box, just extra storage, okay. Um, Alright, come around here and the other big thing we're doing is the uh, Safari 1800 watt induction cooktop. Okay, so this is the world first version it's only it's 1800 watts and because uh, Bruce was talking about the induction um, and basically only had a, a single burner induction and I said well it's just we can't do a single burner we need two burners he said well that's all we've got the two burner induction standard that you can buy is like 2600 watts too 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 big too powerful sucks too much power so basically Bruce um, working together very closely with him from Safari and he made this one for us specially which was under 2000 watts which suits that inverter and a two burner. So we got onto his German and Chinese engineers, made this uh, unit up prop especially for us and that's working brilliant. So if we just turn that on. Right up, show that again. Okay, so we've got here a power point up in here, so I've just turned that on. Now this is the lead here. This lead is connected to the uh, unit. 
our power's going down under there and uh, we just plug it in there and turn it on. Now if I can just get now the big thing with induction you've got to have the right uh, pots and pans so we've got also some zebra gear um, uh, coming from Thailand very you know anybody some of you might know the zebra range very high quality pots and pans and they've got a really nice range of induction cooktops and fry pans so now I'm still learning how to use this here we go so I'm just going to turn that up so that's on 9 okay uh, we might just set the timer you better hear that almost instantly going here we clock stopwatch right on. stopwatch is gone and um, we'll see how long that takes that's probably yeah, a litre three quarters of a litre uh, now the big advantage in the induction is many advantages um, Wind is the first thing, okay, so most places you're camping, especially on the beach, and you know, wind is a big problem with gas, trying to fight the wind all the time. Wind is not a problem, it could be blowing a gale here, it's not going to affect this at all. The, temp the heat's not a problem, now this is, this is true induction, it's not going to get hot there. Um, you know, it's a very clever system, the induction, and what it's doing is just basically, there's a coil here, and it's, uh, this coil is, is got electricity flowing through it one way then the other switching very very quickly so by doing that uh, through electromagnetic sort of uh, electromagnetic type radiation it's affecting the iron particles in the bottom of the pot and those iron particles are going like this back and forth very quickly as well and uh, that creates heat very quickly so um, that's how the system works so that's getting hot it's going to be using a fair bit of power that's on nine All right. If we have a quick look at our app, okay, here we go. So we're on full power there. We're looking at the um, inverter. Just one second. Rightio. So here we go. This is the uh, E dot inverter app. You can see we're drawing uh, 1,900 watts and. Uh, that is coping no worries. So 2000 watt inverter, that's on high. Now this inverter, um, yeah, 1800 watt induction. Now you can only have one on high at a time. If we turn this one here on, then this power will drop down as you turn that one up, okay? But that's, look at how that now. So that's fully boiled. And uh, where's our clock? So 10 minutes 30. You know, well and truly boiled, probably boiled 30 seconds ago. So about two minutes to boil a litre of water. Now the big thing with this too, because it does suck a lot of power. So what you want to do is make sure you turn that down. If you're boiling past or whatever, you don't want to leave that boiling because it's going to be sucking the power. Okay. So we've turned that off. Uh, you can see, you've used a couple of percentage of the battery to boil a litre of water, say. So, But you've got a big capacity there, so no worries. So, you know, if you're going to cook generally dinner, you might use 20% of the battery. Um, you do, though, have to be a little bit mindful. You can't just leave stuff boiling away because it is using a lot of power. Now, keep in mind, too, you know, we are not doing all of our cooking on this, okay? We're going to be using charcoal as well, just like we were before. The charcoal is very enjoyable. It's fun. It's the best way of cooking. We love the charcoal. Still going to be doing that. Um, so this is just, uh, you know, this replaces a gas stove. And for 10 years camping with the camper trailers, we didn't use gas that much. Most cookies on the charcoal. So this just replaces the gas. Doesn't mean we're doing all our cooking on this. The other thing too, of course, we've had a horrendous fire season this year and been, you know, um, terrible for a lot of Aussies. You know, all the east coast, southeast is burning away and um, so fire danger is a big thing. A lot of southeast Queensland, Victoria, New South Wales have been total fire banned. You just cannot even use a gas stove. No charcoal, none of that at all. So. You know, it's very hard to go camping if you just can't use gas at all, or how are you going to cook? So that is a big advantage also of the induction. It mightn't sound much, but it's a little bit like the lithium. When people started going lithium, you know, the high-end users started getting into lithium batteries, didn't hear much about it. Now everyone's going lithium, vehicles, vans, four-drive, camper trailers. 
And you know, a lot of people are starting to go induction now, right? So you, one or two years time, you'll see a lot of people using it. A lot of people are starting to get into it. Uh, the other thing too, you know, I've got my paper towel holder up here, okay? And anyone who knows about induction, you know, that's, you could have that under there. Um, it's not gonna get hot or burn, right? It's very safe. It's a very safe uh, system. So all this space here now is available. And you know, you couldn't do this before, hanging tea towels over the gas area, because that was just a fire waiting to happen. They blow down, catch on fire. But this is now beautiful usable space that I can use now. So all this space around here is usable for, um, you know, for bench space, which you didn't have before, right? So, and wiping up. So when you're finished, you know, your pots to boil over and all that sort of stuff. Look at that, for a, a wipe down, that is a big advantage too. You know, what's like trying to clean a gas stove Wipeable is a, is a great advantage. So this will fit in any of our kitchens, nice, small, compact. So a lot of advantages. We'll go into more depth of that a little bit later on. Um, fridge is the same. Now let's talk about uh, this unit here. So what that is, is an ice maker. Now it's, I just got it off the website, bought it from Myers online. Quite a big unit. I can fit it in here, no worries. I've got so much space in this trailer. And you might think that's a little bit excessive, but it's 150 watts, doesn't use hardly any power. And look at this. Now I've just put these beers in the fridge. All right? They're not cold, they're nowhere near cold. And you know, if you're camping over the weekend, you've all know that situation where you throw beers in the fridge and you go to grab one and it's not cold, right? So a lot of you is not gonna like this, right? But I've been to Thailand quite a bit lately with Donnie and um, over in Thailand, everybody drinks their beer with ice because they don't have fridges, right? They don't have fridges, so they, all they do is run with ice. Now, if you're camping, um, you got a lot of kids, and I tell you what, I, I always drink beer with ice anymore. A lot of again, you're gonna shit can me over that, but once you try it, because the thing is, that's ice cold. He drinks always ice cold, and nothing worse than this hot weather. You get through half your beer. The last half is hot, doesn't matter if you have a stubby holder, but with ice, once you get used to drinking it, it's awesome because your beer is always really cold. Now if you've got kids as well, they're going through the lemonade and all that sort of stuff, and it's very hard to keep the fridge up to all the drinks. Well, you basically don't have to worry about that. You can keep your drinks outside and just run off the ice maker. So that's making a ton of ice. Right, look at that. So good. Now if you're a whiskey drinker, like Ben Murray or um, your mate Glenn Hogan, Glen Horgan, you know, these guys love their whiskey on the rocks. A lot of people do. And how do you, how else do you get ice when you're camping? I mean, these fridges just won't do it. So it might seem a little excessive, but the point is, um, if you've got the twin lithium, if you've got the big inverter, you've got a power point, then you can do whatever you like, right? You can run these appliances and the big soul of the big lithium is gonna cope. We've also got a sandwich maker here, so we can, um, you know, if we wanna make sandwiches in the morning, we can do that as well. Okay, and with the Safari Simarine app, you can see exactly what's on your, out of your batteries, see where you're at, you can see what's going back in, it's, uh, and that's important to know that. The other big thing as well is, yeah, we've brought our, our data over here. Um, the problem was, you know, you couldn't access it very easy here. This thing, even when you're traveling, pull up side of the road, quickly lift that up, and you're right there. Before, we used to have the alley box there, we've got to move the alley box, untie it, open the tailgate, lift this up, it's a drama. So we've moved everything here, that's working brilliant. It's about to go, ready? Right? Yeah, I'll just put the camera. Oh, I'll tell you what, it's so good drinking cold beer. And like we're talking 38 degrees at the moment. There's no way it might be to be cold at the moment, but uh, there we go. I'll come back. It just left. It just dropped out, so we're not going to. Yeah, here it goes. Oh, look at that! Wow. Oh, that is awesome. If you got kids, mate, that is just going to be, you know. Trying to keep all your drinks cold. Again, 38 degrees, almost impossible to keep all your beers and drinks cold, but look at that. That's just, that's, you know, if you, Aussie beer is pretty strong beer. This is Chang. I've got a carton of that for Christmas, and it's pretty strong beer, so a little bit of ice makes no difference. 
I'd rather drink with a tiny bit of ice than have warm beer, I can tell you. IGT still works really good. A little tub works great there, washing up chop board. That works brilliant. Our adjustable IGT legs there. And this is our new uh, extension bench that goes on there as well. So, righto. Quickly show you this here. You can see these, these were before plumbed up underneath the uh, kitchen and down the bottom there. Now when we did, so these were underneath the trailer down the bottom. Now when we did the Simpson trip, the back, these got just uh, smashed by sand. We couldn't, couldn't get them open. It was a, just a drama, we had to blow them out and stuff. So now look at this here, right? I can reach that very easy. Right there, it's a brilliant new system. It's so much better. It's very quick and these just uh, tuck in a little bracket there. Um, that's it there. So uh, we can do that. That's a retrofitable thing. Quite easy to do uh, that system on, on existing dots and all the new dots are like that as well. Now let's go talk about hot water. So we've got a mixer here and my new little hot water system at the front there is on. All right, now that should be, uh, that should be hot. All right. Now that's too hot to touch. That's over 50 degrees. So that's seriously hot. All right, now the thing is, oh, that is hot. That's like 60 degrees. Here, Cotto, just touch that so I can prove it. Yep, it is hot. <laughs> <laughs> that's burning hot. Now, we can set that temperature back here, but the thing is, um, with our last system on the gas, you'd, you'd set it there for the shower, and by the time it gets around here, from shower temperature, say 40 degrees, gets around here, it's 35. You need 50 degrees to wash up, right? Now, I've also got a mixer here. Yeah, so I can mix that here, right? Um, but if you've got really hot water um, at the sink, that's just brilliant for camping, right? Oh, it's still hot. I'll mix that a bit. There we go. Right, so that's sort of 40 degrees there. So I've got really hot water here individually mixed to the shower. So I can run 55 degrees here and 3540 at the shower. So individually mixed, it's a brilliant setup. So that's a really big advantage here. Something we're really struggling with before is getting, you know, you got your shower temperature right and it's just not hot enough. You got lukewarm water here to wash up. You may as well boil the billy because you've got to boil the billy anyway to try and get hot water. You can't wash up in lukewarm water. All right, so let's go around and have a look at the... Mm. Oh, I tell you, it's so hot today. So, okay, we'll just quickly show you this here. This is the uh, Safari uh, high voltage. When we talk high voltage, we're talking 45, 50 volts. Early start, late finish, solar panel. Very thin, okay. When it's folded up, it's uh, 35 mils, right? You can see how thin it is. It's the Japanese EFTE uh, panels on the front. Okay, that dimpled sort of rubbery paddle on the front. Uh, very high quality panel. I mean, Safari's, you know, they're world leaders in this sort of gear. Um, so this is a new panel, just come out. It's, as I, I believe, from what I understand, um, this is the only higher voltage, 50 volt solar panel on the market, okay? Um, we've, we've made it, I asked Bruce to put in this here, so we designed this together. So we've got a cable, now if you can lock that to your trailer, and somebody steals it, they've got to cut that line. Now most insurance policies for vehicles and trailers is if, if it's locked to the trailer with a, a wire, it's basically um, part of the vehicle or the trailer. So if somebody cuts it, you can claim it on your insurance. It's about 1290 bucks for this and the controller included. But if somebody steals it, um, you can claim it on your insurance because it's locked to the trailer. So it comes with a wire. And now the advantage of this higher voltage is less current okay so when this is running say this is putting out 10 amps uh, sorry this is putting out um, 150 200 watts right it's probably putting out about say it's putting out 10 amps to the battery it's only going to be running about two amps down the cable okay it's all the data's on your phone and it'll show you those individually so if we're running 10 amps into the battery it's only running because of the higher voltage two amps down the line Okay, so it's running 50 volts, 2 amps down the line. When it gets to the controller, it's bringing it down to, you know, say, 18 volts and uh, 10 amps. So it's converting it through the controller, okay? Power equals I times uh, IV. Power equals current times voltage. So the higher the voltage proportionally, it's less current, okay? So 
all of the rooftop solar on, on your roof is running very high voltage because the longer you run your lead, okay, the higher the current, the more of your losses are going to be. Right? So higher voltage, lower current, less losses. Now on your roof, it's got to be high voltage because you're running 6, 8, 10 meter cables. Okay? If it was running lower voltage, high current, you just get big losses. So the advantage of that is you've got a 10 meter cable and you have minimal losses coming back to your battery. Okay? Also with the higher voltage, um, because your, ba your batteries are pumping in, say, they want 14.8 volts pumping into them to get them charged up, right? If you're running 14.8 volts going in, you've got to have 17, 18 volts. You need a little head voltage to be able to push that voltage in, right? So your solar panel, until it hits 18, 20 volts, it's not going to cut in and charge your panels. Now in very early and late light, okay, very early light and late in the afternoon, you're getting a lot less voltage because there's low power from the sun. So from a 50 volt panel, you might half power, half or very low, so you might only get 25 volts, but you know what? That's still going to cut in on your controller and still put charge in your batteries. If you've got a standard panel which runs 25, 20, 25 volts, low light in the afternoon, you might only get 14, 15 volts, which is not going to activate your solar charge and you're not going to put any charge in. So you're wasting an hour in the morning, an hour in the afternoon of low, uh, low, low volume sun. Uh, and this is uh, going to, you know, pump that still into your battery. Might only be one or two amps, but it's better than nothing. And so you're extending your time that the, tol the s solar panel is working. Well, I hope you can understand all that because I only just understand it myself. So, very good. High voltage, 50 volts. High, high voltage, low current runs into here. The solar controller, you must have this solar controller. You can't run this solar panel through any other solar controller. You must have that one because that's made for this high voltage, right? We're selling these separately. You can chuck that in your vehicle or in your trailer. Runs in parallel, it'll work alongside any other system, Red Arc system, but it's got to go parallel direct to the battery. It won't run through the Red Arc system, it'll run in conjunction with the Red Arc system. So you can use it, and there's also a few advantages of using this with the Red Arc system, which we can talk about another day. So that's it there. You right? Mm hmm. You want to sit? No, I've got to go after this. <coughs> Righto, so quickly I'm going to talk about the big ensuite. Now, the problem with our little en-suites, they're 900 mil square, the wind blows the sides in and you're sort of like this, right? I'm pretty skinny and even I've got a light go like that because the sides blow in, they're pretty, pretty tight. And so, you know, and we've got all this room here, so this is our new en-suite, right? It's 1.5 by 1.8 metres long and, you know, you've got enough room to swing a cat in here. There's huge en-suite, you've got kids, whatever, there's plenty of room in this en-suite, right? I've got access one, two, three sides, made for the dots, but this is something that'll go on existing dot brackets for en suites. So if you've already got a dot, you can take that, your other en suite off, chuck this one on. Or you can also fit this on the side of any vehicle, right? So I've got, at the moment, three access points, one, two, three, you've got a window this side, and all these walls can roll up with the, with the en suite. So basically, all you've got to do is unzip these corners, they can all flip over onto the roof and roll it all up together. So it's almost just as quick as their other ones and the big thing is too you've got a roof okay now none of the other on suites have got a roof you know if it's raining of course you know you're having a shower but when you finish showering this is a change room the portable toilet it's it's a lot of things in here so you really want a roof on there and if it's raining you know you can't get dressed in the rain and also in a lot of campgrounds you've got drones flying around and you know a lot of people are wary about you know sitting on the portable toilet and there's drones flying around so it's really nice to have a roof a lot more cozy if it's cold it's much better so this is a great awning um, just developed it and uh, here's some pockets we've got for your clothes shampoo whatever but you can put a table in here a chair in here whatever so that's a great awning now this is our new shower system so this is a Julka uh, shower tap it's got a magnetic backing on it All right and that just goes on to, I've got a steel tent pole, just hooks on there like that. Alright, so that works great. Alright, now that temperature there is a little bit hot. I'm going to adjust that at my mixer. Alright. So, that's how that works. And the good thing too, if you're trying to get the right temperature, you can do that here. So you're not wasting water. We've got a little sink drops in there or a little bracket. Right, a little bit too hot. 
Now this does pressure and temperature. Right, I'm going to bring that back to there. You can see how hot that is, right? That steam coming off that. Right, that's temperature there. I'm not, I'm not wasting that water. Come over here, right? Now you want to conserve water. You can turn that on. Okay, you can turn that off two or three times when having a shower. It's going to be exactly the same temperature each time you turn that on. It's not going to turn on the gas, blows out, different temperature, heats up. It's the same temperature every time you turn that on. So that's a big advantage. Now what we've got over here, right, I'll just lift that up, get that out of the way. This is a unit here, okay, it's 240 volts and uh, it's a German uh, unit. Um, first of its kind, just been released because this is a little bit like, it's a 240 volt unit but it runs off non-mains pressure and that's the difference, okay. We've got it just strapped in there. So we're running this through a mixer so you can adjust temperature because this here is the temperature control. It'll go up to 85 degrees which is pretty high. If we leave it on there, eco setting is 60 degrees okay and then you can mix it so you can have 60 degrees at the sink and 35 40 degrees back here we're mixing it for the shower from here the rest of these controls here are the same as the dot we had before front tank back tank external source all the same but it's just condensed up on this side of the wall so now the big thing with this this is going to draw 200 amps going to seriously suck out your batteries but it only takes about eight minutes to go from cold up to your temperature okay six to eight minutes very very quick and then it's going to store 10 litres at that temperature. So uh, 10 litres at 60 degrees is like 15 litres of water at shower temperature 40 degrees. Okay. Now the other day we had two showers, we washed up. Next morning we still had hot water. This was turned off after it's heated up. We still had hot water in the morning for a shower and also we washed up. So give you an idea how much you can use, um, what's stored in there when it's turned off. Right? It's turned off at the moment and I can leave it off all night. I'll turn it on tomorrow morning when the sun kicks in and really powers up our unit. So the other big, <coughs> sorry. <coughs> the other big thing with this too is what I'll do if I'm driving, it's a touring trailer, if I'm driving along in the morning, right, you've used all your hot water, turn that on, okay, I'll turn it on at the power point, there's a power point in here, turn it on, it's going to suck 200 amps from this unit, but then I'll start driving, okay, so I'm going to chuck 30 amps in from the vehicle, 25 30 in from the solar chucking 50 amps say into the battery so what's coming out of the battery is only 150 amps which is 75 each can cope no worries you can suck out of the batteries 100 amps each battery the very high quality batteries for a short time so that's no problems but the best time to do it is while you're driving and then you know if you're touring day to day it's perfect you're gonna have heaps of power if you're staying in one spot you know time it you know day after day then you're gonna need to put your portable solar panel out and that's what that's for that's our new unit there. Mixer here. Um, turn it on and off. I've got a short little hose here as well. Okay, on and off there. I've got a short little hose here. So, if I wanted to, you know, wash your face in here, clean your teeth, whatever, that's a nice little uh, sink there that you can wash your face, clean your teeth in the morning. Okay, now the other big advantage of this is, right, so you've had your shower, you've got your towel around you, you're getting changed, whatever, straight out of here, right, look at that, straight up into the walk-up hardtop tent. So, because we've got rid of the gas bottle, which was here, we can access this right through here, which is just, that's really, just absolutely brilliant. So, such a big advantage, out of the ensuite, straight into your tent. In the morning, you know, when you get down, you've got a portable toilet in there, you want to go to the toilet, you can just duck down here, just a great system. So that's uh, right. Let's have a look at here. I think that's pretty much it, really. Ah, the big solar on the roof. So let's have a quick look at that. So what we got up top there is 525 watts of Victron panels. Okay, and you can see it takes up the full surface area of the hardtop rooftop tent. Um, 525 watts in conjunction with a 250 watt panel gives us 775 watts of solar. You know, you can pump in well over 30, 35 amps in full sun. Um, okay, so we've got big batteries. We're taking out a lot of power, but we've got big replenished power, and that's what we're doing with those big panels on the roof. Okay, once the sun hits those, 
it just smashes it, pumping in big amps. So, yeah, so that's the new E-Dot. There's no gas for the kitchen. There's no gas for the hot water. Running all off the sun. Now, you know, it's a big advantage not carrying gas bottles. The gas bottles are going to be five, six kilos each bottle. You've got to, of course, fill them up. You never know what's in them. And I've been running, uh, bu building campy kitchens for 20 years. And uh, the kitchens revolve around the stove. The first question is what sort of stove you got? So we know all about the stoves, what sort of connection point is. And you know, basically for 20 years I've been he hearing people whinging about gas bottles because they don't want to have to hook up the gas each time you pull your kitchen out, but you don't have really any choice. There still is not a good gas stove in Australia on the market. The best gas stove that I've been using that I know of, the best gas stove that I know of is the uh, Partner Steel Stove from America, which is illegal to buy in Australia and uh, or the GS450 snow peak stove, little little single burner stove, again is illegal to buy in Australia. The two best stoves on the market in Australia now are illegal to buy here. You can get them, but they're illegal. We don't have a good gas stove on the market and we never have, okay? So, because, you know, for a lot of different reasons, um, but you've got to lift your bottle out and basically connect it up each time. And people have been whinging about that for 20 years. So, you know, I know more than anybody about what the advantages and disadvantages of gas stoves. And, um, you know, I didn't like the induction to start with. I wasn't a fan of it. I'd never used it, didn't know anything about it. Like, I was typical like most people. Didn't know nothing about it, so I was just like, oh, I don't, you know, I was just a bit ignorant of it. But once I've used it, I understand the system, and I've used it. It's so quick, it's so efficient, it's so clean, and uh, has many advantages. So I really like the induction in conjunction with still our fire or charcoal cooking. So that's pretty much it. Um, yeah, that's our new systems, the induction, the water up high, the big solar, the power point at the back here, the big lithium, the Victron Sci Marine Safari, the new ensuite, and the new hot water system. That's the new E-Dot. So 2020, this is our 20th year in business. Um, and we've look what we come up with, you know. So it's pretty cool. This has been six years of evolution of the dot, 20 years of evolution of business. And, uh, you know, we've got an awesome team. Kaido's working very closely with me every day, designing and uh, building this trailer. Um, so very lucky, and uh, here's the E-Dot. Thank you, guys.